Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement slash trophy guide. And this one we are getting it all in Ghost Files Memory of a Crime. Now before we begin, make sure to click that subscribe button for more 100% game guides and more content. Now this is a game developed by Brave Giant, published by Artifacts Monday and is available to you for just £12.49 but is on sale at the time of this recording for £9.99. But, it, you know, it'll go on sale plenty more times, though, I'm assuming. Now, if you know Artifacts Monday, Point and Click Adventure Games, this one is no different in terms of anything. It has the same familiar feel that we've gotten to know and love. It's got the same gameplay, the same questionable acting in it, um, the same sort of hidden object puzzles, but this one really does have a very interesting and great story behind it. Now, in terms of achievements and trophies, a lot of it is story-related and unmissable, but... We, like in previous games, have to do the whole find three objects in three seconds on a hidden object puzzle, complete it in under a minute, don't make a mistake during a hidden object puzzle, etc, etc. You know, don't skip any mini games either, etc and all that. But, you know, I'll get to those achievements when we get there, and on which puzzle it'll be easiest. So with that being said then, let's begin. You can click on casual because there is no expert achievement, so we're going for nice and casual, which basically means at points during the game or any hidden puzzles, there will be like a small shimmering of sorts, which indicates what you need to collect to move on, etc. But it doesn't make it too easy or obvious. So then, this is the beginning of the game then. Um, we're basically going through like a tutorial thing now. So obviously we've got the A button to interact with things. Um, so pick up the blonde piece of hair there. You can use hints if you want it doesn't affect any achievements or anything like it'll tell us to open up the diary for our objectives etc it'll tell us to use a hint which obviously will now tell us to go up the stairs but again you can i know in some artifacts monday games you weren't supposed to use the hint button at all but this one it makes no difference so up we go then we can't interact with anything yet in this room so we're going to the left into the toilet nice Apparently nobody knows how to clean in this bog. Beautiful. Look in the mirror. And <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. That's the funniest looking... Just look in your pocket. And you just seen there, sorry, the small shimmering. That's the sort of little tiny clue and hint that we need. Um, but, uh, yeah, sorry. I've totally lost my mind now. Click on both of these. We will put them in our um, inventory. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just pissing about now. Uh, that's just the funniest way of f looking hurt that I've ever, ever seen. Right then, so if you've played these games before, you will be familiar with these hidden object puzzles. It's literally, you'll see the list at the bottom there. I'm pretty sure some of these are random throughout the game, but this will be the same one um, all the time. Now again, like I said, there will be achievements for... Um, you press down to go on to the Monaco game, but we won't need to play this game at all. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, like I said, um, <clears throat> I actually tried... My way of doing things is... go. Completely go all around it and just smash the A button and hope I pick everything up. But it works for about the first five or six items and then you've actually got to look. So whatever way you want to do it is fine. But I thought I could have got the three hidden objects in three seconds here. But I don't. But we will get that again a bit later on. And I'll uh, let you know when we come into that. So you can get it at the same time as well. So yeah, just um, enjoy everything and just keep cracking on for two seconds. So there we go then, that should be your first hidden object puzzle done. Hopefully you didn't use a hint. Um, like I said, th there'll be plenty of hidden object puzzles if you did end up using hint this time. 
Um, obviously, to open up your inventory, then you've got to press either the left or the right trigger, and then you can just scroll across. Um, and you'll see there's like a little star symbol next to it. They are the ones that you can actually interact with by pressing the Y button. That'll get you to have a look at it, and then you can press the A button on it. And obviously, this time it's a first, first aid box to help our main character, whose pain face just creases me to absolutely no end. That is the best face of somebody being in pain that I have ever, ever seen in the entirety of my life. Now, you will see me quite a lot in this game. I'll sort of stop for about two to three seconds, and that's purely because I was looking at my notes. There's a lot to have written down. Um, but for the moment, what we are doing is we're just looking in the mirror, and we're going to be using the um, bottle... Uh, I mean, who looks like that? Come on, dude. Seriously, who looks like that? And then use the bandage to bandage yourself up. A little cut means lots of memory loss, apparently. Why those parts? So what I'm trying to do here now is actually there are two collectibles in this room. There's only three types throughout the game. Um, hats, uh, floppy disks, and morphing objects. They morph into pipes. So I'll let you know when we go back into the toilet to get the first one. Um, but press B, uh, press and hold B to back out. Uh, we still can't collect any collectibles at the minute, but go ahead on your... I tried going back in, but we can't at the minute. So on the right hand side you'll see just a small little door hanging off there. Go ahead, grab that. There is a battery that we're going to be needing, so take that. Now you should have two out of two batteries. Press back. This is a little puzzle we'll be doing a touch later on. And directly in front of you on the table, press A to zoom in. And then take the forensic kit. This is going to come in handy, as you normally would, being a detective. And then just uncover the seat. Now, again, you just see the small little bits of shimmering there. That always indicates the way to go. So uncover that and then uncover the photo album. We're going to need to take a photo from there a little bit later on. So for now then, get your uh, get your wallet. Um, obviously, you can again, you can only interact with things that have the little star symbol next to them by pressing Y. Um, you can't carry on. We need my wallet, so go ahead and get your wallet out there. Uh, by pressing the X button to use, as you've just seen, it's pretty, they are pretty obvious, the controls and what you've got to do in the game. And obviously, the code is directly in front of you there. 1944. Just go ahead and take all the your little, little uh, fingerprint kit. I forgot. I almost forgot what it was called then. So take all three items. Take your diary as well, and you can have a look in it. Wednesday, twenty second. Nice coffee stain. It doesn't take good care of this. This is disgusting for someone with memory loss. This, uh, but we don't need it right now. So I'm pretty sure that is everything. Uh, press the down button anytime you want to use the forensic kit we just press the down button but there's not I think we'll be using it about only two or three times throughout the game so press down to use it if you want again we're not doing anything with it though we haven't got any DNA or anything so it's a bit pointless and then open the map with the left bumper this would come in handy but we don't use the map at all throughout the game but it's worth a shot so then, now we go to the toilet and we'll be getting our first two collectibles. And the very first one, uh, there's a cap right by the shower, and that is a morphing object. You see the pipe on top of the toilet right there? Make sure to pick that up. I actually miss it, um, but it's okay because whenever you collect a collectible, that stays collected forever, even if you start a brand new game. So, and usually there will be two collectibles in each scene, either a uh, floppy disk which is on the right hand side and a uh, another morphine pipe which is just underneath the window there. There'll only be two usually in each scene. There's another collectible just hanging off the chain there which is another pipe which will be another morphine object and another hat by the bike seat. So that's already six collectibles out of the way then. Again I'll point the collectibles out when needed. Go to the victim, get his wallet out 
Um, press the right or left trigger to get your inventory up. Use Y. We'll now be doing a little mini game. Uh, it's sort of like just like a little puzzle, as you see. You just need to rotate the images to get the perfect image. But if you want to see the finished product, just go ahead and skip to 12:45 in the video because I'm not going to be babbling. I think I'll give you a minute or two of pure peace. Don't listen to your school teacher's kid. This is how Jesus actually died. Look at him, looking all scared in his shirt and stuff. By the way, these recollection achievements, these are basically unmissable. I think there's about three throughout the entirety of the game. So, hope you enjoyed that. That was your first. Again, any mini games, make sure to do them all. Don't skip them. So, click on the left hand side just above the um, bike there. It's the sort of hatch we need to get through. Pick up the flashlight. Which should be good. Now what we need to do is go to entry, get the flashlight and remove that and put the two batteries in it. Then with that done, now we can return to the toilet. You're probably wondering. I mean, if we've got memory loss, we've probably forgotten how to take a poop and pee as well. Which is just a shame. So we've probably pissed ourselves as well. Um, just underneath the mirror there. This little mini game is easy. Use your pick locking kit. All you gotta do is just press the left stick to the right. Um, I thought you had to actually rotate it all the way around, but you just literally stick the um, left stick, keeping it to the right, and then it'll just sort of click into place automatically. So you'll have no issues. Nice, easy one for the first time then. And just pick everything that's inside of it. The hand switcher and the escape board instruction and the first out of two bucks who's in there <gasps> thief murderer uh, police by the way the voice acting in this game once again is just <laughs> phenomenal well done <laughs> it just tops so go back down twice obviously by pressing a hold of the the b button and we'll be walking up we'll, we'll be doing our this is the next hidden puzzle i get confused here for some reason but you've actually got to walk up to it so this is a kind of different hidden object puzzle so what you need to do put the hand in and then put the game board instructions on 
Now, every time you move the hand, um, only two screens will be available, and you've basically got to take an item from one screen and put it into the other, which is missing. So, for instance, the revolver and the gun is missing. Uh, so we'll need to do that. So, for instance, we have got... Uh, let's see what the first one first one is. You pick up the bell, but that is for the one at the top, so I actually missed that one. So you get it. So you see the horseshoe there. Horseshoe on the right-hand side. Put it into the place, and then actually press the A button to pick it up. But what I'm going to do is get the first, the top two screens going. I am then going to place three items, and then I'm going to collect them to get the three hidden object in three seconds so it's going to be the cherry um for, uh, the revolver sorry for the gun from the right to the left screen then the uh, ace of spades and then the cherries and now collect all three so one two three and that should get your three hidden object in three seconds hopefully i haven't babbled and i've made a little bit of sense with that one but again, just keep going through, keep, just keep following what I do then, just picking up everything which is on the one screen and put it to the other. It is quite easy anyway. Job done, nicely done mate. We've got a photo part and we've got the second book now as well. Um, to get the second photo part, um, by the way, you have to look in the photo album. Um, and the victim's wallet, sorry. But what you have to do is also look into the photo album and that is where the third piece is. So there might be a bit of dialogue there first, but just wait until that goes off and then just go back into it, grab the uh, third photo piece, click on the one, obviously press X to use it, and then just press, uh, now we need to use the medical tape, sorry. Come next eventually. Eventually, eventually, there he is, look. So we use the medical tape to stick it all together. And now we just need to press A to take the bookshelf combination, which if you remember was upstairs. So yeah, apologies if that bit did take a little bit long. I was just looking at my notes there. So go to the right on the bookshelf, um, put the two books on it, and then press X to get out the um, combination as well. And it's literally, just, it's another simple, simple puzzle, this one. You've literally just got to copy exactly as it is there. So the second, fourth, and fifth book, you just press A on that once, and that will open up the escape route for us, we can get the um, lock mechanism and the escape route. God damn, I love the voice acting on this. <laughs> so head back down into the basement then, um, go to where the lock mechanism is, and this time we'll be, we'll, we'll be using that lock mechanism and then just press A on it, job done, we can now move on. Now this next hidden object puzzle is where I get the rest of the hidden objects. So make sure to just pause the video, there's only about 5 or 6 items to find but I do it without making a mistake and I also do it in less than a minute as well. So obviously if you want to pause the video here and just wait and see what I do, flick the switch on the right hand side, very important make sure to not make a mistake and obviously you'll know you'll make a mistake when the sort of um, your reticle goes red and it sort of shakes so take your time just copy what I do follow where I go and you should get the achievements no problem this is the easiest one I found to do this anyway So 
So hopefully you just fun, uh, followed exactly what I did, didn't make a mistake, so you will unlock three achievements here, hopefully. Now our first direction then, you'll see we have to go left as per the instructions, it's the man walking on the zebra crossing right there. So you can either go straight, which obviously is, is the wrong one, because it's not on our directions, um, but we'll need to play another hidden object puzzle. Again, if you didn't get any of the achievements in in the last one, this is another perfect opportunity to do it as it's quite short and they're quite easy to find. But like I said, hopefully you would have got them all in the last one and we can just absolutely smash on and crack on with it now. Who's there? Show yourself. My mind is playing tricks on me again. So, creepy ass whistling and the lights go out. Yeah, no thanks, not, <laughs> not for me that one. Uh, so <laughs> use X, get our flashlight out, look for the bike, which is exactly the same as that one, so we now know we need to be going to the right. They do look very similar, but just trust me, I've already done it. Um, so we'll be doing another hidden object puzzle. This is the last one, but we'll be doing it in the dark. So this one's... Uh, a little bit tricky, yeah, still quite easy, as there's not a lot to find. So then, that's the last one now. We will get our directions out. It's the car with the line through it, which is right there. So now we'll be going to the right. And now we are out of it. We can now go forward, and that'll be the end of chapter one. So very enjoyable so far, right? Loving the voice acting. Le <laughs> loving the gameplay. Now we've got Freddie Mercury, who's apparently come back to life and is a cop these days. And there's an ice cream van going by, which... Really, really does make me want an ice cream, to be honest. So what we need to do first, then, just click on the scene, and <laughs> Freddy's going to turn around, and somehow he can't see us. He's probably all aged up in his eyeballs. Nah, I'm sorry, he's a legend. Love Freddy. Uh, <laughs> pick up the plank that was on the floor and the collectible just above it, and then we've got another collectible, which will be a pipe, morphing from a bottle right now, right on the right-hand side. So there's the next two. Go and click on the umbrella just above the bin. And then get in your inventory, press Y on it, and then interact with it to get an umbrella screwdriver. Could be easier to just go and, I don't know, stab the cop in the leg or something and take his car, but, you know, games are just not as easy as that. Next, go and interact with the sort of motorcycle right there. Use the umbrella screwdriver in the little vent to go and grab us a wheel, which is going to come in handy. I love all these handily placed objects. Just for us to find, especially with someone who's lost his memory. At least he knows where he works. Um, go and click on the board now and get the screw from that. Now that the so we've got a screw and we've also got a plank now. Uh, click on the left side of the bin. Now we're going to be using the plank of wood and then the wheel. We can't use the screw first because there's nothing to screw it in. So plank. Then wheel, then screw, and then the umbrella screwdriver. So that's good. Now we'll interact with that. And again, again, Freddy can hear none of this, which is perfectly handy for us. Uh, interact with the bin again, and there'll be a, a cloth for us to pick up. Now we'll be going back onto the motorcycle using... Yes, back onto the motorcycle. And the... There is a little oil cap that we need to interact with and get a nice oily rag for us. And now we can calmly make our way back to the bin, use the oily rag on the wheel, and then push the dumpster three times. And 
well, apparently, not a noise, not a squeak we made. That's how good we are. So just simply interact with the window, use your umbrella screwdriver on the nails and then interact with the window to get in and like, love the life of luxury that we have got. You can click on the bug, that doesn't really do anything. Just look at this for an office, woof, so somebody's doing freaking well for himself, isn't he? It's nice. I hope I'll find my answers here. So, as per usual, every time we get to a new scene, we're going to collect both collectibles. There's one on the right-hand side, which is like a cup, another cup, and there is one just under the sort of uh, banisters on the stairs there, another floppy disk. Right then, so, first things first, we will be uh, looking at the right-hand side, taking a look at the picture, and we'll also be taking the... Uh, King of Spades from here after we do this little mini game puzzle again not too hard and if you want to see the finished solution go to 2805 Jim yeah, not too difficult, mate. They're looking damn good. Beefy boys by there. Right, next up then, we will be heading to the left to grab the old hat. As you can see, it's on the hat rack right there. Then just back out of this, uh, head back to the right where the photo frame was, and now pick up the King of Spades right there, now that we can. And there's also a little hat track. Hat track rack sorry not hat rack it's a little hat rack which we can now use on the uh, where we got the old hat from just now but what i'll do is just go to your hat and uncover a letter and an allen key as well we won't need these till a bit later on but it's always good to have them in our inventory for now And now go back to the rack where we got the hat from. Now that we can uncover this and then go in place, uh, go ahead and place the hat rack on it. And on the very right hand side, you will see a little hidden object puzzle for us to walk up to and grab. Now, this one is the same sort of thing, but we'll need to be grabbing 12 wing nuts that are located within this whole thing there's a few little sort of puzzles and things for us to do so this little uh, horse chest piece for instance we'll need to place him on there i come back and do this just a little bit later on because i'm not very good at chess and that's a pain in the ass 
But again, just keep following the video. This should be the exact same for you as well. So there shouldn't be any problems with that one if you do get stuck. Just keep following the old video. Right then, so that is that hidden object puzzle done. That's not actually too bad, to be honest. One of the trickiest ones, but anyway, from here out, it's all smooth sailing. But of course, don't forget to pick up your old police badge, because without that, we are not getting any further in the story, and you might as well just quit now without all the achievements. Um, <laughs> then go on to the right, place your police badge, and then we've got a couple of items to pick up in here. So yeah, I did say in here because it is actually a secret room. Plenty of them in these games, ain't there? So as usual then, let's pick up our two collectibles. The first one is on the top left, which is a collectible floppy disk. And what's morphing into a pipe? I've kind of got a small screen as I'm recording, so it kind of looks like a floppy dildo or something from there. But anyway, that, <laughs> that should be a sixth smoking pipe to collect it. Uh, right. Into the left, pick up the card and the VHS tape. Now go from the middle one and then just go left and down and around. And that will give us another item on the right hand side. And the last thing in this room to collect, go directly to your right on the desk. Uncover that to take the Sword of Justice. That's a pretty cool little statue, actually. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind having some of them. I'm on a spending spree during this lockdown. <laughs> I tell you. Anyway, go down now. Um, what you can, if you haven't done already, is get the Allen key from the old hat and the one out of three decipher codes. But of course, we have done that already. So the next thing to do is put your VHS tape into the tape recorder to get a combination code. Murphy's always washing out back the dodgy bastard. Oh, actually, sorry, you don't know he's dodgy yet. N never mind. God, Jim, uh, come on. Uh, crazy camera. Record already. Ah, there. Partner, I hope you're watching this and not a bunch of police officers after they've searched your place. 
<laughs> you old dog, Murphy. King over 10 equals 140. Good God, Murphy's face reminds me of someone. It reminds me of an actor, but I can't remember who. Anyway, <laughs> right to the next... Uh, right next to the VHS, actually, we'll have like this Sword of Justice. Now place the Sword of Justice and the Scales of Balance that we found earlier on. Here we go, look. And then what we can do is then use the Allen keys on these... I don't know why these screws are secret, probably because there's a decipher code in it, I expect. But use the Allen key on them and then we've got two out of three decipher codes. Now we've got a few short, easy sort of puzzles coming up now. Go back into the secret room, have a look at the safe, which is just on the left-hand side right there. It's, it's actually on the uh, filing desk cabinets, though, not actually where I'm pointing very stupidly. There he goes, I got it. Right, now, of course, as we know, it is 140, which is the code. So you literally just turn it all the way left, and then it'll automatically uh, stop on the right number so it makes it nice and easy for you what we need to get then the executioner file that sounds pretty daunting and extremely intense doesn't it now use your infantry go on to the executioner file and that will give you your third out of three decipher codes and this is where the puzzles come into it Sorry guys, just checking out my notes here. Right then, so this next puzzle, uh, obviously press X to use, use the decipher codes, which is the only thing we can use. And what we'll have to do, basically this is like a matching up puzzle first. So just match up the symbol from the left onto the right hand side. Very easy enough this is. So as you can see, that sort of M looking thing on the right hand side, it's one directly next to it. All you gotta do, you can't really get this wrong as there's no time limit or anything, so enjoy. So for this one, we're sort of just filling in the blank. So again, just copy what I do there. You see me, I pick up the um, telephone receiver. Next, I'll pick up the face, which is just on the left-hand side. So another very easy one. Again, one you can't get wrong. And it's exactly the same thing on this one as well. So you're just following what I do and loving life. Uncover some stuff, get some stuff, let's get the stuff. Right then, so now we have got Big Lip's address. <laughs> That's a hell of a gangster's name, I tell you. I know there's a lot. You got your Fat Tony's and everything, but Big Lip's is, 
a hell of a gangster name. So go outside twice, and now we've got to fight what looks like Freddie Mercury's back from the dead. So this is where I get the minigame in less than achievement minute. All you've got to do is follow the pattern here. Follow the pattern exactly the same as you do here. Left bumper, right bumper. You actually block him first. I actually got it wrong and still got the achievement for finishing this in under a minute. So you've got time if you do make a mistake. I tell you what though, I didn't even realise Freddie Mercury was a hell of a baller in his day, wasn't he? And so for the next solution then, it's hand, gun, fist. Do that twice and you'll get the achievement lovely. <laughs> Look at <laughs> What a struggling face, eh? Well, sorry, you didn't even need to do it twice. You only had to do it once, but... Still, that should now get you the finishing the uh, a mini game in under a minute. So now I'm pretty sure that's all the sort of achievements for hidden objective puzzles and mini games out the way. So that is fun. We are now sort of we can sort of now relax a little bit more with puzzles. So just grab the keys, get in his car, and we are on to chapter three. This is the right place. So, of course, then, first thing we need to do, directly in front of you on the wall there is the smoking pipe, and directly above that is another hat. So, flying through collectibles now, and what we'll need to do is go into the boot of our stolen police car, and we'll be playing a hidden object puzzle. Now, what makes me laugh is our main character's kind of lost all his memory, but he can remember quite a lot of stuff for... <laughs> Someone who's lost their memory, stuff that he, I don't even know, and I can't, and I can remember, and I haven't lost my mind, sort of. So then we've got our grabber tool, this is going to come in handy. I mean, literally, we could have, might as well just use this for the majority of the game, but we don't. So go to where the dog's sleeping then, grab the gilded key, which we need. The dog's going to shit us up right now, because, man, all angry dogs do this. Whoa, but they're so cute. Even though they want to rip your face off, they're still so cute. So uh, yeah, now we can attempt to go in. Focus. Man, I tell you what, this guy's pain face and his voice just creases me, <laughs> honestly. So, uh, yep, use the gilded key, and now we'll basically be able to kick our way in. There we go then, sad news, Big Tits is dead, or Fat Lip, or whatever you want to call him, he is now dead. I tried to get the collectibles here, but we actually have to click on the scene and do a bit of investigating on the body before we can collect, so that's what you need to do. Go ahead, click on him, and what we'll get is 
um, a hair sample. It'll go through a little bit of dialogue first, it'll go back off, and then you have to re click on him to get the hair sample. At least, thank God, they aren't actually pubes and they're actually just head of hair. I hope, anyway. Right, <laughs> um, anyway, we'll be using our forensic DNA testing kit for the first time. So go ahead, put both the first and the second bits of hair sample on them. What we need to do now, it's very easy. You just have to get the scissors first, place them on number one, number two, and then go ahead, get the rightmost bottle, uh, Sorry, not the rice, that looks like, looks like a hair from here. Get the DNA sample bottle, and then we'll be able to put them under the microscope, and we'll be doing a sort of little puzzle right now. And what you have to do is get the... The first one we need, then, is getting the red, sort of spiky-looking bit of DNA. As you will see, there it is, look. And then what you need to do is press the X button, now to switch to the next bit of that sorry I'm so bad with words I'm just awful with words so any scientists <laughs> I'm very sorry I've butchered all this but we need to do X to switch and then we'll have to click the same red bit of DNA go back to the first one and it's sort of the blue big blue blob looking one that one right there again press X to switch get the same one and then the last one is the only yellowish looking one So not only did we get the killer's DNA, we also got an achievement, and now we can collect our two collectibles. And the first one is just on the table there, which is a morphing pipe. No, sorry, that's the hat. The morphing pipe is just to the left of it. And apparently I'm really blind today. So now we'll be doing a little search for some bottles. Uh, for pictures of bottles even, and the first one, somehow we managed to miss. We got the pubic hair out of his hand, but we somehow managed to miss the... First picture of a bottle, which was up his sleeve, right there. So go ahead, pick that one up. Don't worry about the card. It's a little pointless. Next one, we will need to go and take a camera now. And a light bulb. So they're on the delicious looking bottles of wine. Except I'm not really a wine fan. It tastes like pure sour piss to be honest um, <laughs> go to the left put the light bulb now into the light as one would do I'm not gonna make any blonde jokes or about light bulbs and stuff don't worry I'm not that kind of guy I'm funny in other ways funny looking for one and now we can <laughs> take a picture it'll do it automatically that will be our second picture of the bottle let's go ahead and pick that one up there so that'll be now should be two out of four. Next, we'll need to uncover, take a little, blah, 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 a little, uh, I keep going to call it bullet opener, but it's a bottle opener and it's a case shell, bullet case shell. And we'll be doing our first bit of fingerprint DNA. Now, obviously, what you have to use is, well, you're going from one to three. It's, easy, it's as easy as that, and somehow I butchered this one up as well.
Well then, let's just say thank god I'm not a detective because I would have been sacked on day one and a long time ago. Right, get your Polaroid out, don't leave yet, press X, get your Polaroid out, that will be three out of four um, pictures of bottles that we need. There is one, uh, another clue that we need right there. That's lovely, and the fourth one out of four that we need is on the fish tank, which, as you can see, the little uh, bit of light shimmering there directly, directly in front of you, more or less, just left of the dartboard. That's where we need to head off to next, so obviously we can't just stick our hands straight in, we've got uh, a couple of piranhas, so use your bottle opener on the skull thing on the left top corner, that will loosen up the skeleton in the fish tank, but we can't grab it because we'll end up losing our fingers, which, you know, we obviously don't want that. But there is a net on the very right hand side of the fish tank, which again, somehow I miss. You can see it, it's literally right there, but my eyes, they didn't work at this point for some reason. There he is, got him now, got him now, so pick that up, and that will be our fourth out of four bottle pictures we need. Now, of course, always remember to pick your items up. Now, I'm just wondering why nothing was happening, but I was a bit, I uh, lost my head a bit there. So, <laughs> eventually, we end up picking it up. Now, what we've got to do is go to the wine rack in the back of the shot here. And just copy exactly what I do. So, press X to get up the photo of the bottles. And then just click the same bottles that I do to complete this tiny little puzzle. So, to everyone's surprise, that opens up a secret basement. Let's head on down there now. we've um, There's a chain on the left to turn on the light. Watch out for the sex mannequin, though. <gasps> nah, no, I'm joking. It's just a regular mannequin. I don't know what a sex mannequin is. Which I'm going to shut up because it's going to make me sound even weirder now. Uh, anyway, we've got a few collectibles in here. One <laughs> a collectible hat on the very left-hand side there. And there is a pipe, which is... Which morphs into the fish there on the wall, on the back of the wall. Now you'll always manage to, uh, I mean, always grab the collectibles, of course, before you leave, which would be just great. Uh, now go to the safe right here. Um, you, there's actually a coin that you need to pick up there, covered in tape, so just obviously pick that up. I mean, it's what we're doing throughout the entire game. Really, isn't it? Uh, look at the arcade machine on the right. Grab the knife. We will be playing a little arcade game a little later on. But for now, we'll just find the rest of the coins. Now, we will actually walk up to said mannequin. And plug the first plug in. Obviously, we uh, you can take the actual duct tape, but you need to use the knife on it. Open up his hand. Get the coin out of that. I don't know why he needs the knife. I don't know why he couldn't have just lifted up his arm or something. But just video games make you want to work your ass off. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just can't be arsed, can you? But there we go then. Now, next what we've actually got to do is fix the broken plug right here. So, of course, get the duct tape. That will now fix the broken plug for the TV in the back. So, you'll actually have to go and plug that one in now. So, press A just to plug him in. And now the TV in the back will work. Turn the channel to number four and a tiny little cutscene will play out for us. Woo! Well, I mean, when I say cutscene, it's actually we're just grabbing the coin, which is just underneath where we turned the channel over. So there's no cutscene. But now we have the three out of three arcade tokens. Now we can play the arcade game. Now what I've done is actually put the solution at the very top of the screen, as you will see here. So again, you can either just pause the video and copy that, or it's completely up to you, whatever you do. But that's the correct solution for you. So that will get you to the end without being spotted by the cops first time. But enjoy!
So then if you didn't notice, all of those numbers were the safe key that we need, which we uh, first looked at earlier on at the very right hand side. So now click on the safe, 2957. Ooh, doesn't it make you feel all detective-y? <laughs> well, ish. Up to a point. Luckily, you can make mistakes on this game without being sacked. Pick up the red file, and then we will do a little bit of digging. So, all you need to click on then is Mary Kelly, and then click on Mary Kelly's picture, as you can see, which is scratched out just on the right. And out will come Murphy, who looks like th that actor that I can't remember his name of. Now, there'll be two choices um, for dialogue you can choose, so talk to him. Make sure to choose the first dialogue option, which says, you yourself will get arrested so Murphy can basically go free. I don't know what happens if you choose option two, and quite frankly, I don't want to know. So then, I guess I've got to say thank you to Murphy for just only slightly knocking us out there. So, <laughs> while we are in Murphy's police station, grab the collectible floppy disk on the left, and there is a pipe, as you've just seen there, directly in front of us. So make sure to grab the first two collectibles first. And now we have to do this little puzzle. Again, this one's easy. If you want to just see what the ending looks like, just go ahead and skip to 59 minutes and 10 seconds. Well done, Big Murph, coming out with all the suggestions and all the advice there. So to get out of this, then, we need three little paper clips, which we can find, obviously, because they always come in handy for us. So go ahead, move the newspaper first, then. There will be uh, two paper clips, I believe, on this point. Grab the rubber band, grab the tape first, grab the picture as well. Uh, the bobblehead doesn't do anything, but it's always fun to look at a bobblehead. Turn the picture <laughs> and grab the paper clip. Again, we've also got some escape route instructions as well. So just grab everything that you possibly can on the desk. Move the coffee cup, get paper clip number two. Get the pots and pans out. Oh, the pots and pans, the bloody pen pot there, and that'll be your third paper clip. Now, go ahead, use the X button on your uh, little handcuffs there. Now, this puzzle is probably the most difficult and most pain in the ass one in the game. So what you have to do is obviously line up all three locks with the pick locks. I mean, sounds easy, right? 
but this has an added twist. Now, click in the second gear, the right-hand side one, rotates that and the first one. The third gear, the bottom one, rotates that and the first one. And the first gear, the big one on the left, rotates all three. Now, this took me around 10 minutes or so to do, but honestly, and I am sorry for this, I didn't really have a strategy. But what I tried mostly to do was figure out the distance sort of each lock has. I put the third one, say, about halfway down, tried all types of strategies, but really it just comes down to patience, having to play around first, and eventually you will get to that point where you're very close and have more of an understanding of what you're doing. I'd also be, uh, just a little note, they don't actually have to be perfectly in line, just close enough to snap together. So again, I am sorry that I wasn't much help on this one. Oh, that really did twist my titties in the wrong way, to be honest. That was not a good puzzle. Anyway, as soon as you finally get out of that, then we can get the coat rack, move it up against the door, so obviously nobody can get in, even though nobody's come in so far, uh, which is always good. Um, now, all we have to do, we got to uncover, so t uh, get out, go to the desk on the left, the cupboard, open up the box, and we'll get ourselves a little caliper and an eraser. An eraser. And uh, what we need to do now is make a slingshot. And you do that by using the rubber band, the caliper, and the eraser. Now, British people call an eraser a rubber. But, of course, that also stands for condom. So, I'll just stick with calling it an eraser, I think. And what, <laughs> and what this will do, anyway, is use an improvised, sli uh, improvised slingshot. And that will get us the hell on out of here. Oh, he's a hell of a shot, is our Adrian. Uh, sorry, I've forgotten his name, to be honest, so I'm going to stick to calling him Adrian. Now, from this point, all we need to do is go to the left and then go right twice, and that will get us where we need to go. So somehow we haven't seen any other cops so far, but grab the collectible on the left, the collectible hat, and there's a collectible pipe on the right, just on the table there as well. So now what we need to do then is grab the, um, open up this door here, a janitor will come out, and we need to knock him the fudge out of yeah. I mean, you know, to be fair, that was a hell of a shot. Just <laughs> smash him out. Now we've got to do this hidden object puzzle with the knocked out janitor. I tried smashing an extra buck on his head. Got to make sure of these things, you know?
So now we've got a padlock key. Now we can get the ladder, as you've seen, that was locked just by the door earlier on. So go ahead, use that. And now we can open the door as soon as we grab that ladder. I'm impressed he can fit that in his pocket, if I'm being honest. Go ahead, open the other door with the number eight on top of it. We've got a few things to do here, which includes collectibles. One floppy disk in the bag on the right and one pipe on the other bench on the left right there. Let's go ahead, grab them, and then what we'll do, open up the chained door right in front of it, get the padlock out, use it on that, and that'll open it up lovely. We can now grab our things that had been so disgustingly taken away from us. Oh, by the way, where's the two cops that arrested us? I haven't seen one bloody cop in here so far. Which is always handy for us, isn't it? So just pick up all your things anyway. Next up then, if we just go ahead and press and hold B to go back, we need to now change a bloody neon light. So not only are we a detective, we are now a janitor. Although then again, we did just knock the janitor out. So I suppose that's our own doing. Uh, so go to the trophy case at the back there. Now the lights will go out. This is where the ladder and the neon light in that padded um, bit of wherever in the other room we just got will come in handy. Go ahead, use that. Neon lights will work. I tell you what, I should be getting paid more for this. Take the picture of, quite frankly, one hell of a moustache. I'd enjoy a moustache like that. But more importantly, there is the combination safe code on the back. So we're going to go back into the room now. Go to that locker there, which is ours. And all you've got to do is just press X to use and get the combination code there. And then press the A button a couple of times to open it up. And then all you have to do then is just literally uncover everything in the locker and pick everything up. And then we'll get dressed into our nice snazzy little uniform. So it's not really a hidden object, but it's a hidden object puzzle of sorts. But it's definitely one of the easiest in the game. Right then, so last thing to do on this chapter, we've got the police uniform, uh, go onto it, get the batteries out of the pocket there, um, and then what we have to do is obviously play the cassette tape now. And that's as simple as just putting the batteries and then the audio cassette into the dictaphone, pressing the button, and then afterwards just place the police uniform on mirror, and then we are off to Mary Kelly's place. Not for a rub down or anything like that, well, not that kind anyway. Right, so now we are on to chapter 4. This is just outside Mary Kelly's apartment. So first things first, as we've been doing, collectible hat on the left. And where I am right now, there's going to be a collectible pipe. Which is just at the bottom of the steps there, a little bit further on. So we've got those two collectibles. Now what we need to do is we need to uncover, take the metal 
uh, sculpture package. I mean, you could sell that for a few bucks, couldn't you, really? So take everything from there, then. Little cutscene's gonna play out now. Spooky, spooky stuff happening up there. Uh, get into your inventory, then. Get the package. We'll uncover that for some schizors. I don't know why that box was hiding right where it was, but strange things happen in video games. Anyway, we need, now need to go to this vending machine right here. Use the brick on the glass. That'll just pop open the uh, little number machine there. Um, we need then to use the... We need to grab the coin. Eventually. I'm not dull, honestly. We need to use the scissors to be able to grab the coin. And then with that, we can use that as like a screwdriver sort of thing. That'll uncover that little part there, and now we can get a candy bar. Or chocolate bar, as is usually the correct pronunciation in the UK. Go to just under the stairs now, give the chocolate bar to the raccoon, the Greek <laughs> bloody scrouging little shithead. And then we could do a little hidden object puzzle, and eventually we will be able to get the rope from this. That is a real good find that we've just done there. We've got a rope. Not sure if you can't just climb the stairs to go to her apartment, but there we go. Again, stranger things have happened. So now we're going to be using the metal sculpture. Use the rope with that, and then use it on top of the window where you've seen someone get shoved out and shot out of. Just at the top, by the sign. So welcome to Mary Kelly's apartment then, looks a bit like a trash heap, but there we go. Grab the collectible floppy disk on top of the shelf on the left hand side, and the pipe which is just on the table. So again, always make sure every new scene you go into will grab the first two collectibles there. Turn on the light on the right hand side, and oh no, it's Murray Curley. Oh boy, these uh, animators do not flatter these characters, do they? <laughs> so just click on Mary Kelly again then, pick up the other shell case and hopefully got the improvised bandage as well. So if you haven't already, now place both the bullet shell casings onto your forensic table kit, which of course you access by pressing down on the D-pad. Use the bullet spray right there, and then what we'll have to do is put them both on the microscope on the right hand side. Now this next puzzle isn't really a puzzle at all. With your directional stick, just press it all the way to the right. And then we will find the first direction, uh, the first bullet. There it is, so now that'll just sort of mark it automatically, which is great. And now just go all the way to the left until you find the other uh, bullet shell casing. And then go ahead and press the left bumper or right bumper, doesn't really matter, but that'll basically switch it down, put it down to the negative. And that'll be it. That's that's it. It'll mark it automatically, and that's it for the next puzzle. Oh, 
So there are our bullet shells then. Now go ahead, click on Mary Kelly again, have a look at her bracelet, and that'll give us an S key. Now wonder what an S key could be for. Could it be a shit key? A scumpig key? Anyway, we'll find out soon enough. Go left towards the kitchen now. Now there are another two collectibles in here. So of course, just be aware of that. There will be one on the right hand side with the collectible hat. And you'll get two achievements here and the pipe is just to the left of the screen here eventually disguising its ass as a banana and there you go then another two achievements beautifully done for us go just by the cooker between that and the fridge and you'll get this little box excuse me and that is what the s key is for then so there's not really that much mystery in it to be honest get the pliers and the handkerchief not much to do in this kitchen so we can back out now Go back onto Mary Kelly herself. Now we can get the nail from earlier on by using the pliers. Again, sorry kid, we ain't getting you out yet. So, you'll just have to sit there, suffer in silence. Anyway, go over to the right hand side now and you'll see this phone which needs a few things connected to it. But we're going to be getting this other nail first with the pliers. So now we've got the two out of two plays that we need to actually rescue Mary Kelly. You can connect the phone here if you want to, but we still need to get the actual phone itself. So we'll come back a bit later on, go to Mary Kelly, use the players on her, and she'll be <laughs> ever so grateful. Mm. Oh my god, it was a wig! The bitch was doing a Britney Spears on us. Well, well, she bald? Oh, holy crap! Now Murphy's been shocked with the loaded shotgun trap. It's a good trap, actually. But we've got Britney Spears bald bitch running about the place. Murphy's been shot. Oh, good god. Floppy disk on the right, as you can see. And there will be a pipe literally to the left of it as well. You know, don't go and rescue Murphy too much. Make sure to grab those collectibles first. Screw that guy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, click, like you just seen, click on Murphy. We'll be getting a few things now. Um, and this will involve doing the fingerprint DNA analysis once again. So now we've got like a slight sort of puzzle coming up. Uh, what we'll do, using our forensic DNA table, uh, just put the number one and the number two fingerprint uh, DNA analysis that we've done so far down on this forensic table. Once that's done then, just go ahead and use the yellow bottle there, which is obviously the fingerprint. Uh, fingerprint spray, which is pretty obvious if you really think about it. And we'll just be doing another slight puzzle, just follow exactly where I go to find the little bits of incriminating, differentiating fingerprints. Well, you'll soon see what I mean, but just follow exactly what I do anyway, and it'll mark it automatically. So, not only do we get Murphy's fingerprints, we also get an achievement for it as well. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, click on Murphy and nick his switchblade. He ain't exactly going to be using it. We'll come back for the diary a little bit later on. You can't cut his fingers off, I'm afraid. Not for it, it's a bit inhumane. But what we, what we can do with a switchblade is use it to cut the ropes to go ahead and get the shotgun. 
which shouldn't harm you because, well, it's already been used. Which is just a damn shame, isn't it? There we go, we've now got a shock, uh, shotgun. We could just blast our way through, but sadly, it, it's not working like that. So, go ahead, get the shotgun, and then uh, use uh, get the used cartridge. Sorry. Now we've got a used cartridge and an empty shotgun. So just leave them two alone for now. There is a little sort of box on the left hand side we'll open up right now. Uh, the first thing we can do is use the switchblade to open it up. Like so. Uncover it and then we can get some earphones after being <laughs> punched in the face. If that was just for dramatic effect, it wasn't really that dramatic, uh, dramatic but still. Uh, now we can actually use the used cartridge and unplug that for a hidden object puzzle. I'm still reeling off that boxing punch in the face, that boxing glove punch. Whoa, boy. What's funny is we've done that hidden object puzzle for a secret letter, but the secret letter doesn't actually do much, I don't think. What we need in is handkerchief, so there you go. With the first handkerchief, unfold that twice to get one out of three pieces. Next in your inventory, go into the secret letter. There's an actual handkerchief um, holding that by, so eventually we'll get to it one day. So it's an actual handkerchief, so we'll just go ahead and take that off and put the shotgun cartridge in the empty shotgun for a loaded shotgun. Strange. So there is a safe on the back of the wall we come in uh, back for that just a little bit later on, but we need accommodation first, so go back down into the kitchen. Now we can use the shotgun. It seems to be a bit of a waste of shotgun ammo, to be honest, on the kitchen cabinet right there. Um, could have literally just used a switchblade or something, but the only way to do it, pure American style, bruh, is use a shotgun on everything. And <laughs> what we'll get out of there then uh, is another... Uh, hidden object puzzle to receive an alcohol bottle.
So now we can go back up and finally heal Murphy up. Seems like it's been a long time just to try and get some alcohol and some bandages for him, haven't it? But anyway, go into your inventory, go onto the alcohol bottle, get out the dirty handkerchief. Dirty bitch living here, she can't even put a bottle back on tidy. Yeah, bottle cap back on tidy, sorry. Uh, <laughs> right, but anyway, we've got the three handkerchiefs now, so now we can go ahead and use them. We can use them on the improvised bandage. And then go ahead and use the alcohol bottle and the improvised bandage, and then just blast it on the Murphy there. Obviously using the alcohol first. <laughs> Again, the pain noise is just fantastic. But anyway, once he's all fixed up-ish, oh, it's just a shot in the arm, you bloody fanny. Get up. Anyway, we can now take the diary. His, oh, his notebook, sorry. So now we're back down. We'll go back to where the phone was earlier. Now we can actually place the cord on the earphone. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now this is another puzzle that we've got to be doing then. We need to place the notebook and then select the different, obviously different patterns to be able to get a number up, which is actually the code. And obviously you're thinking, what the hell would you have to do? So just get the place book up and then it's literally just copying what it says in the notebook there to get the number 559448 or 18 eight actually um, I must be going blind 559418 and that is the code for the safe upstairs now we're also going to phone 911 to get Murphy some help because he can't handle a little shotgun in the arm then again I probably wouldn't either so I don't blame you kid Policeman has been shot at all. The police. Hopefully, then you use the pen to jot down the safe code number, and when we are back up in the attic, then use the place note on the safe five five nine four one eight, and we'll have a couple of puzzles. We've got three. So go ahead, open up the book, and what you'll see on the left-hand side is a couple of images. And on the right-hand side with the letter, which actually did come in use for us, actually. I said it had no bearings when it actually did. And now, as you can see, you've got sort of a whole bunch of these symbols. Now, you've got a couple of symbols on the left-hand side. All you've got to do is put the symbols from the left sort of in order. So, first of all, for instance, we'll have the heart. Go to the next one, whichever that may be. And then click that. So you're just doing that in order. So it's not really that hard at all as long as you're following it properly. Or, of course, you could just wait for me to click them and just follow me. You've got a choice. But we'll be doing this uh, a couple of times. So uh, about three sort of different letters we've got to use. So.
And that's it then, so simply just take the photo now, and that is the end of chapter 4, we've only got two chapters left to get through now. Hopefully that puzzle wasn't too difficult, hopefully you, um, you know, got through it without any pains there. Well there we are then, welcome to chapter 5. Again, first things first, collectibles, one hat in the tree and one pipe directly underneath it as well. So again, always make sure to grab the collectibles before we sort of do anything, just so you don't forget. Go ahead, ring the doorbell. Obviously, as it is in point and click adventure games, they don't just let you in, do they? Because they hate you. Sorry to say it. And ooh, what an oddly convenient letter that's just flew in my face. I'll just copy exactly what I do for the puzzle here. Oh, now a tree's on fire. That's just great. So, go directly in front of you there. We're going to be taking a couple of items right here, which includes a metal box. Hopefully that last puzzle, by the way, wasn't too taxing, and you were able to follow it without too much of a problem. So, hopefully that went well. Now we've got this burning tree, just to piss us off a little. We'll go to the shed just on the right there. Use the metal shears. I suppose all shears are metal, really. You're not going to get plastic shears, are you? Or are you? Anyway, take the planks as well before we leave. Just take everything you see on screen. And we can't actually get past the padlock yet. So there we go. Just back out for now. Into your inventory we go into the metal box to get a folding meter and some super glue. Very conveniently handy objects, see, in these boxes, which you find randomly out in the wilderness, outside the front gate of a mansion. Although I suppose it could be, I've never been to a mansion, so if anybody rich, you tell me. Now then, we can go, we can't obviously get past the burning tree yet, so we'll be going to the front door of the mansion. And then with that folding meter, we can get the lantern with a rag, just up in the upper left hand corner right there. Again, this will all come in handy. Um, go into your inventory and open up the lantern to get a rag for the leather cloth and the leaking lantern. And then back out of here for the moment because we don't actually need anything from this point for now. And then just go back into the same sort of little water fountain we seen earlier on. Place the lantern underneath it or on top of it. And then use the water hose as well. Also, you use the super glue. That'll obviously fix that up nice and lovely. And then select the leather cloth. And that will fix up the pipe. That'll get rid of the flame. And then we can go to the left, finally. And unlock an achievement for us as well. A lot of hard work went into that, but we've done well. So, first up then... And so immediately to the left, up against the wall was the floppy disk and the pipe is just next to that on top of the stairs as well. So obviously make sure to grab them too before we move on. Next we can place the planks in the river so we can cross to the ominous looking statue. Which is obviously why I'm looking all around the map and not actually on it. <laughs> on the river. So we've done that. Now we can go across, we can head onto the statue, take the crank which is 
obviously on the ground next to the statue. And then we can also back out and take a dog collar, which is just by a grave right there. Again, you always think these things don't come in handy when they obviously do in just such a video game. So now we can go back out and we can use that dog collar now on the chain right next to the shed. Use the dog collar. Then we can use and select the crank. And this will be another hidden object puzzle to get a small shovel. Oh, are we actually going to bury some dead bodies after this? But the answer is no, we're not going to be burying any bodies. What we are doing is going back into the sort of different garden bit. Zoom where the graveyard was, or the grave where we've got found the dog collar. Use the small shovel on that, and there are a cluster of coins from there. Grab that. Next, we can go back to the statue and give that and give that greedy bitch that cluster of coins. I don't know what a statue wants with money, but it's richer than me, which pisses me off. Anyway, now we kept the family crest, so now we can go down and finally we can enter the front door of the mansion by using said crest, said breast. We are done. We can finally enter the mansion. Nobody's here to greet us though, not with a drink, not with anything. So, hmm, yeah, tanks a bunch. Two collectibles in here again. Collectible hat just on the stairs right there. And at the bottom of the stairs on the left hand side is another pipe. And next up, then go to the two doors, which are at the top of the stairs. For now, we'll just be collecting some uh, the candle, tweezers, and a magnifying glass. You'll find them on both of the doors there. But now we'll be looking at that red wig we were doing earlier, now that we've actually got tweezers. So, we don't actually need to go into the forensic DNA testing kit yet, so just ignore this. But what we do need to do is go into your inventory and open up the red wig. And this is now where we can get the magnifying glass and the tweezers look, so go ahead, use both of them. I'm going to say we don't need the forensic testing kit, it's up to you if you want to do it anyway. We'll all have to end up at the same place. So again, just it's just like the fingerprint DNA puzzle, just follow where I go along and it'll turn blonde automatically.
Got another little puzzle coming up again. Use the hair sample three and the killer's DNA. Put them both on the forensics kit. Go ahead then and use the scissors as you can see. And now we'll be doing the same sort of puzzle that we are doing earlier on with the floating little bits of DNA. Obviously use the DNA spray first. Then we can put it on the microscope on the right. And it's exactly the same as last time. So it's the red one first, then the blue blob, then the yellow blob. And obviously as soon as you collect the first one, remember to press X to switch it. And it's as easy as cheesy as pie. Alrighty then, now that we've got the killer's DNA, we are basically in definitive proof land, so a little bit left to do though, so now go over to the fire, use the candle on it, obviously, to get a lit candle, I don't know what else you'd expect from that, there's no point chucking the killer's DNA in it, otherwise all this work would have been for nout. So now we can go to the right hand door, not the left one, we can't grab this just yet. So it's on the right hand door, then use the lit candle on it. And look how cute this little kitten is! No, oh, look how cute little kitten is! Oh. Although I'm allergic to cats, so meh. Which kind of sucks, really, but. Uh, but we do need that cat. He's just gonna go down at the hole in the floor, which is just great for us. But what we can do is take a canakin. Or a water can. I don't know why he's called a canakin. I'm going to call it a water can. Because that's what it is. We can't obviously get the cat yet. So we'll go back outside. We'll go to the little water fountain from earlier on. And just place the water can there. To get a full water can. And then. And you can sort of see where we're going with this. We'll go back into the mansion. And now we can put the flame out to get the shed key. The flame on the left hand side, obviously, the only flame. Except I'm a flame too, darling. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, anyway, you get you get the picture. Just just take the key. Take the key and we'll go back outside, okay? <laughs> Now that we've got it, now we can finally go to the shed. We could have just used something sharp and heavy to blast our way through, but more respectful, I suppose. To use a key, so we'll get the butterfly net and the little axe. Oh, that's just great, isn't it? We need an axe to bash our way through. So we're going to now go back into the mansion, and now we're going to get that little kitten out. So zoom in on the stairs, and then smash your way through the stairs. Hopefully missing the cat, which we do, because otherwise he's just going into a soup. <laughs> Catch him with a butterfly net. And then stick him in your pocket. As opposed to just picking him up in your hand and then taking him what we need. I mean, if you could fit a ladder in your pocket from earlier on, the kitten's going to be no problem, is it? <laughs> just take the code. Uh, take Well, it is a code off him. It's the little kitten collar. So take that. Now we can just chuck the cat out. We can do whatever the hell he wants. Now we can go to the door on the left. And finally, we can put the hat on the little lady. And... We've got the code, and that code is 749. So, obviously, there it is. Press X to use it, just in case, but it is 749 anyway. Lovely. Now that that's done, now we can go forward to speak to the old lady. Where is the murderer, you bitch? You tell me now. Anyway, there's a collectible just to the table on her left. That's a collectible pipe. And there's a collectible hat to the right of her as well. So again, remember to pick those two up first. And now we can speak to oh, oh, old person. Sorry, I can't hear. Uh, she's going to tell you she can't hear, which is just crap, really. Although, I suppose, 
So we're going to take her here and we're basically now going to be getting a couple of batteries for her hearing aid. And what we'll do, look at the left hand side on the cabinet, sort of looking thing. Have a look at the photo, grab the digital watch. And then just back out of here and then on a little bookshelf just to the right of this. Uh, just behind old lady, there's going to be a lighter, which again, everything just comes in handy, doesn't it? All comes in handy. Right, now we can use the ladder, which will go up into the attic. I go ahead and use the lighter on this point now as well. And finally, on the left-hand side, go ahead and take the pocket knife. So, now that we've got all the little items we need for this particular bit, what we'll need to do is use the pocket knife on the digital watch, take the two out of two batteries, put those two batteries into the broken hearing aid for actual hearing aid, and then we can give that back to um, old lady, and then we can speak to her, finally. So the old gal's got her hearing aid back. Now we can give her the photo of Murray Curley. And of course she's going to say, Oh, I don't know who this bitch is. But basically there's a little puzzle we'd be doing now. Every time she moves her arm, you just uh, click on that. Just follow what I do here. It's very, very easy and she'll end up giving us the bookshelf key. You're a goddamn liar. But thanks for giving us the bookshelf key anyway. So, it's the only book with the lock. Go ahead, use the key in that, and it's a little secret room for us. There's going to be another two collectibles for us to co uh, cook, collect even. And the first one is just on the left-hand side. The collectible floppy disk right underneath the ladder, and the pipe is next to those other massive pipes. Right, first things first, then we can now go to the table on the left-hand side. Uh, just pick up the newspaper. Uh, first of all, just move that and we can get one of those square tiles. For, well, remember, we it's one of the first things we clicked when we came into the old lady's room. So, nothing there for now. We'll come back to that a little bit later on. Go to the right. There's another square tile. Uncover that and we can now zoom in. And once you unlock that then, now we've got a little, another hidden object puzzle for us to do. Nice and enjoyable.
So from all of that fun then, we just get a little wind up toy. <laughs> Head back out, go back up into the attic, and now we can use that wind up toy. And that'll basically get us the third square tile. Who says this game ain't funny? And it landed so perfectly on the chair uh, on the left of Old Lady. Which I missed for a while, actually, to be honest. Somehow, again. But that's it now. So now we can go... You see the cabinet just to the left of the Old Lady's head? Now we can just go ahead, plug them in. And it'll be another... Hidden object puzzle, baby. Oh man, I gotta stop singing in my videos, Jesus. Anyway, another hidden object puzzle, and we'll receive a table key after this one. So I'm pretty sure that's it for hidden object puzzles for the time being anyway, thank god. So move forward, go back to the left hand side cabinet with the mirror that we went to first earlier on. Now we can open up that little Chester drawer, that little tiny drawer, lock drawer, drawer 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 drawer, with the table key. And basically what's coming up now is, a, again, a couple of very very easy puzzles. There's not much to say, you just sort of click where I click. And move the characters where I move the characters. It's as easy as pissing in a pie. Although, don't piss in a pie. Pies are too tasty for that. So there we are then. Mystery solved, more or less. We now know who the executioner killer is. It is Mary Kelly herself, the deranged lunatic. Uh, so pick up the photo of Murphy and we've got a little cutscene. Ugly beach. Ooh boy, so we find ourselves trapped, go ahead and use the lighter, and this basically acts as another hidden object puzzle, so what it is, you'll have to find sort of cracks in the wood, indirectly a couple of times, but, so what you'll do now is just click around, find the sort of cracks in the wood that resemble, uh, what you're going to look for at the bottom there, uh, just keep sort of, it's what I do with every hidden object puzzle, I just smash the A button and uh, <laughs> smash around, so I have to do this, uh, once more after this, and then we are free as a boyd.
So I did just lie actually, um, I did say you had to do that twice more, it was only once more, so that's all good. Achievement unlocked for us for escaping that, get the collectible hat, which is on the empty barrel, and the pipe, which is to the left of that hat, on the um, bits of pallets there, pallets and woods. So, first thing in this room that we have to do then, there's a little remote for us to pick up there. So go ahead, grab that, and now what we need to do, I'm pretty sure we can't actually, I think we need batteries for it. So move the curtain, have a look in the push chair. In normal games, this would be an explosive doll. Luckily for us this time, it's just a creepy doll, which isn't just as good, but we're still sticking it in our pocket anyway. And then we have to do, go ahead, um, in the inventory, get the baby doll out, use your pocket knife on it. No, not like that. Don't be bloody deranged. Just to unscrew the back. Get the batteries out, put them, um, and then we'll put them in the port remote. Well done, that's a real good job. Now onto the ladder down there. Use the port remote on it to turn it on. That'll get the ladders going and then attempt to move forward. I say attempt because, well, she's not gone yet. That is just the creepiest whistling. The creepiest. Anyway, go back to where the locked wishy just locked us in. Grab the iron bar off there. We can't obviously use that for now. So we'll be going back. We can use the iron bar on this uh, big massive boulder. On this grave here, which will give us the wrench or the spanner, depending what country you're from. I don't know, it's a spanner. It's a spanner here anyway. And now what we can do on the push chair or pram, again, wherever you're from, use the uh, spanner on the wheel. And then what we can then do is, I'm pretty sure we can just escape now, is what we can do. So, go ahead, move forward, use the wheel. And, well, apparently that's all it took was, <laughs> was just the wheel. Interact with it three times and we are out of here. But we're going into the garage now. So then this is the last location of the chapter. On the right hand side on the shelves you grab a collectible floppy disk and on the left hand side on the barrel there collect another smoking pipe. It should be 23 out of 31 now. So next up we need to be get rid of the helmet which is on the motorbike and grab the rotary and the pen. I believe it's called a uh, rotary. Uh, you know what I mean, one of those dialophone things. Go on to the phone just above it right there, use the, um, I'm going to call it a rotary anyway. Use that, use the pencil then on the paper, that'll sort of sketch a number for us. And now we have the garage code, which is 834. But we still have to use that phone, so don't leave just yet. Uh, what we need to do now is get the photo of Murray that you've got, not Murray, Murphy even, select dial, and then we will and then we'll be able to take Murphy's location when she accidentally gives it to us, the nurse on the other end of the phone. We are sleuth. <laughs> what a stupid bitch. So she's accidentally given us that, which she shouldn't have, but we've got the garage code. We've also got Murphy's room number now. So it's all coming together for us, finally. But we're not actually escaping just yet, because there is a gasoline and a broom outside for us to take right there. So grab them both. Um, use the broom now to smash all the crap up above. And that'll give us another hidden object puzzle for us to receive the ignition.
And that's it guys, click on the motorbike, use the gasoline first of course, because you ain't getting no way without no bloody gasoline. Unless you found that it runs on water, but, well the government will probably kill you then if they found that, I mean I'm just joking of course. And then use the keys and we are out of here, chapter 6, the final chapter coming up. <laughs> but imagine if he crashed and lost his memory again. <laughs> on the motorbike then all this would be for nothing and we'd all be pissed welcome then to chapter six again first things first grab the collectible hat up in the tree and there is a pipe on the um, big thick penis trunk of the tree as well so grab that of course it's not as straightforward as just walking in because we've got a cut. I don't know if it's the same Freddie Mercury cop from earlier that we beat the crap out of, or if it's just a different looking Freddie Mercury cop. But there's a Freddie Mercury cop there, so have a look inside the police car, uh, uncover the leaves next to it, and that will grab us some acorns. Now this is all for a good reason, of course, we ain't just hungry. Oh, excuse me, there is a squirrel in the tree, uh, grab the uh, cloth right there, and then uh, use the lighter and then grab <laughs> grab the squirrel's nuts. Jesus. Give the nuts to the squirrel even. <laughs> but please, as a disclaimer, never grab squirrel's nuts. Okay? You don't know what'll happen. Anyway, with that we can get the wire. And now we can go back to the police car, get the wire. And then we can place the cloth over the microphone. That moustache, though, is absolutely freaking glorious. Might as well have just done a Chief Clancy Wiggum noise then, uh, voice then. It would have made no bloody difference, wouldn't it? So what we need to do then is click on the back of the ambulance right there for another hidden object puzzle. That will give us the crutch, which will enable us to move forward on to ye old scaffolding. So that's us, now got the crutch. Did you want to hear my uh, Chief Wiggum impersonation? Yeah, see? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll never do another impersonation ever again. Anyway, use the crutch on the scaffolding ladder to... Oh man, I just embarrassed myself. We can climb up the ladder now anyway. Moving on, moving on, quickly. Uh, <laughs> collectible hat on the left next to the hard hat. Collectible pipe just down and left, a little bit below. And we are getting to the end now of the collectibles, obviously. So, collect the plunger right in front of you there, and we'll now take the sneaker. It's actually called a trainer in proper terms in the UK. Wink, wink. And then take a look actually inside the box. All you're doing is matching up the screwdriver, so look for screwdriver symbols. This one isn't even a puzzle, to be honest. It's barely a thing. 
but what we'll be getting in here is a hook. So we'll cover a couple of things. We've got a hook for us now. And go into your inventory. Next, have a look at your trainer. Now we can get a uh, shoelace. And then we can put the shoelace on the hook for a hook on a string. Because there is a bag just off the edge. God, aren't we insightful. So now, as you would expect, go and actually take a look inside the bag. That will get us a glass cutter. Not sure why a glass cutter's in the bag hanging off the edge of scaffolding, but there we are. It's convenient for us, isn't it? Now then, of course, use the plunger first, not the glass cutter. We need something round and small. Although, I mean, couldn't you just use a... Did you really need the plunger? Couldn't you have just, like, made a big square? Instead, would have made it a lot easier, but anyway, we're inside anyway. So, inside the hospital. Now, the first thing we are doing, look at the elevator. You can't, this, that happens anyway. Get some collectibles now. One on the very right-hand side. The collectible floppy disk, which is just in front of the TV. And just on top of the TV is another smoking pipe. So, again, make sure to collect them to ASAP or before you leave. Uh, grab the coat off the coat hook there and then take a look inside and what what there will be will be a key draw unfortunately no money for us but we've lost our memory anyway so we don't know about money which is all good saves the police department a couple of grand a year <laughs> take a couple of things uncover a few things but what we are looking for then is the drawing and then we basically finding out where we're going and where we are. Now then use the coat rack to make a mess up above and then go ahead and look at the hidden object puzzle on the bed for an elevator key card now. That's it then, the mighty has spoken. We've got the elevator keycard, now we can use it on the elevator. Obviously, that's what it's for. And we are off up, we're going to see Murray. Uh, Murphy, how the hell do I keep calling him Murray? So we're just outside Murphy's room then. Again, first things first, grab two collectibles. One's on the bench there, 12 out of 15 
floppy disks and just above that then will be the other smoking pipe so again make sure to grab them two first So there's a guard's jacket just to the right of the door, go ahead and cover that and what we'll get is a taser and the guard's wallet. So make sure to grab both of them then, and then what we'll do is have a look inside the guard's wallet, get his credit card out and then we can shimmy our way into Murphy's room. Don't know why it's locked though. Oh, I suppose there is a serial killer on the loose and she's probably after him, so... That's probably why. But this is a little puzzle that we need to be doing. Just follow exactly the same as I do. It's, it's pretty simple enough anyway, but it's just easy to follow me. We're just moving these blocks out of the way to get the credit card through. There we go, mate. Nice and easy. We are through into Murphy's room. Open his door. Go to the left. And again, before we do anything, there's another two collectibles in here to grab. So one will be on the right, the smoking collectible pipe. Uh, quite close to the hat, and one is on the very left. The, um, uh, what's that? The collectible hat. Which is it now. We are done for the collectible hats. We've just got a couple of floppy disks left to get. So go up and talk to Big Murph. How are you holding up, buddy? You've got oh. I don't think I like oh as an excuse, to be honest. But hey, there we go. He's off his head. So, what we need to do, look at the cabinet right by the side of him, grab the uh, glass and the toothbrush, and then use the taser on the little save combination key there. This will give us another hidden object puzzle to do, and that will give us Murphy's medicine. So there we go, but we can't just give it to him, you know, we can't just swallow it like a man, he's got to have some water with it, like a big fanny, but anyway. Uh, no, <laughs> use the lighter on the toothbrush then, that'll give us the toothbrush screwdriver. Job done, scary stuff. And then have a look at the right to, there's a water fountain right here, now we can use that toothbrush screwdriver 
place the empty glass on it and we will get a nice glass of water. So there's that then, we'll go back into Murphy's room, speak to Murphy again. You've obviously got to give him the water first and then the pills. I tried giving him the pills and he... He just... Oh, sorry, no, he does have the pill first and then the water. Oh, man, I don't... I don't even know. I think I tried giving him the water first and he wouldn't have it. Trich! Ungrateful. But basically, what we're having now is three very, very, again, simple, literally simple puzzles, just rotating tiles to get the picture straight. Easy, easy stuff. But again, if you just want to see the finished product, just go to 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 20 seconds. By the way, right here, you will get an achievement for uh, completing all the recollection memories and scenes. 
Uh, my internet, I had a few issues with unlocking achievements at this point, so you'll see me unlock this particular achievement just a little bit later on. But it will unlock for you right here, right now. <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. Anyway, we are coming to the end of the game now. So first things first again, collectibles. Grab the 13th floppy disk, which is just in between the pipes there. And you could probably just see it to the left, sticking out on the wall, the uh, collectible smoking pipe. I couldn't see it first of all, but it is just to the left on the wall. So it might be pretty obvious to you, but there we go. Now there is, again, a very conveniently placed box with some convenient moldy cheese and a convenient wrench for us to take. Always for something in, in this game, always for something, always conveniently fantastic. But anyway, we will be giving this cheese to a rat to go ahead and get a wire brush on the second wrench. you just seen the rat just in the right top hand corner there. There you can piss off. There you go, grab the second out of two wrenches and the old wire brush. And what we can do then is now use the wire brush and then use the two out of two wrenches. So we need to clean. Mary, wait. Sorry mate, if you tell someone to wait, they're not exactly going to wait, are they? That's if they, Especially if they're running away, it just doesn't work like that. I thought you were a detective, kid. Anyway, up above the door where the box was, use the two wrenches and we can sneak through into the penultimate room of the game. Again, make sure to grab two collectibles. There's one pipe on this big old rusty boy on the left hand side, what looks like a boiler or something. There is a collectible smoking pipe. Morphing into a regular pipe, so don't be, um, don't get confused with that. And there is another floppy disk uh, just to the right of the main crane control right there. So first of all, go on to the main crane control, just grab the broom, and there will be a scarf, uh, not on here. There will be a scarf just above it on the stairs right there. Um, no, what we'll need to do is place the scarf... Use the broom, and that will give us the pliers and the machine instructions, which will always come in handy. Now what we have to do then is use the pliers on the left-hand side where we found the collectible pipe. And it'll be a hidden object puzzle, and we'll be receiving the crane key after doing so. By the way, are we just going to ignore the fact that he used a scarf and a broom to basically rip open and bend metal for the metal cage? God damn, son. Who's on the steroids? Who's on the steroids? So we've now got the crane key, and we will do uh, right now. This puzzle is too complicated to explain, but just make sure to follow exactly what I do here. There's quite a few instructions on it. Again, you obviously can look at the instructions, but there's a few times we'll be pressing the same button two, two times or three times, etc. So just make sure to copy exactly what I do here, and we can get through this puzzle and unlock an achievement afterwards as well.
So happy days, that should be it now. Basically, I had to restart this point. That achievement that I just unlocked there would have unlocked you earlier on. This scene is what happens after you uh, finish with the puzzle right there. Plus, you get an achievement. So I haven't edited it too much at all. This is exactly what happens afterwards. So you haven't missed anything out. Don't worry about that. But now we can go into the final room and see this crazy ass mofo. Again, just a couple more things that we've got to do and we are at the end of the game. First things first, last collectible floppy disk just on the right hand side and the pipe is right above it and that will be another two achievements for us. So hopefully you would have got all those collectibles as well following along with the video, so congratulations there. Sorry, three achievements, so we fly in them out now, which, you should, which we should have done really because we are at the end of the game, so just have a little check. These will unlock because, again, as long as you haven't skipped any mini games as well, you'll unlock this. And isn't she just the worst villain? in any video game ever. She actually hands you a suitcase key and she doesn't even watch what you're doing. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna do a little hidden object puzzle which gives us the two bottle pills. So she happily hands us a suitcase key instead of just injecting us with whatever she's got in her hand. Top villainy. Ugh. So you've swapped the pills over, go and talk to the moron again. So you swap the pills over, she just sits in a chair going, yeah, I trust you, even though I'm trying to kill you. LOL, hilarious. So now we'll give her both the pills. She expects you to die, but for some reason, she just decided to not follow you for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and now she gives you disarm instructions. I just... Like, literally, you, 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 any top villain would just leave go. Or have, you know, one of those little heart-to-hearts like Batman and Joker or something before doing it. But, yeah, anyway, this puzzle, again, is not too bad. If you want to see the finished product, just go to 233.35. So once this is finished then, 
Get ready because you'd be doing a, another sort of timed puzzle like you were doing with Freddie Mercury when he beat the crap out of him earlier. So you're literally just copying exactly what the uh, puzzle is. But there's only left bumper and right bumper this time. So that's that then, guys and gals. The game is finished. Oh, all right there, Fred. Sorry for beating you up earlier, kid. My bad, my bad. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations then for another 1,000 and a real great one by Artifacts Monday and Brave Giant, to be fair. So I'm hoping then that not only did you enjoy the game, but you enjoyed the guide as well. You know, as usual, I try to be as straight to the point, no messing about, but with some fun in between. So hopefully, you know, you had a few laughs too. If this video did help you out, please like, comment, and subscribe as it helps me out loads. And I always love just creating these things for you. Uh, check me out, of course, on all my socials, including Patreon. So if you head over there, or, you know, any of them really, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Links, of course, are uh, provided in the description below. And that's it. So thanks so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Absolutely means a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Big love.